Alas uh, Cancorlia. Uh, Minister, this is a cynical budget. It's a short-term budget, and it's a budget that seeks to rebuild the fortunes of Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael and the Greens, rather than rebuilding the state and its public services. Uh, the budget, I believe, is a South Dublin budget that hurts many people living in regional and rural Ireland. And I'll address that last issue first. Now, this government speaks with measured tones, with deep sympathy, when it talks about people who are suffering from uh, poverty and suffering from the, loss, the cost of living crisis. But at the same time, this government actually takes more in terms of taxes, excise and, and uh, carbon taxes on fuel than it has done ever before in the history of the state. So you have a situation where the government is actually taking with one hand in terms of high taxes on fuel and then giving back uh, in so-called electricity credits. This government is, is playing a three-card trick on people uh, in terms of these costs. You increase excise on petrol and diesel in June, you increase the tolls in July, you increase excise again in September, today you increase carbon taxes. For commuting families, you have hiked prices four times in four months in the jaws of a cost of living crisis. That's not tea and sympathy, that is highway robbery, Minister, when it comes to people commuting. Um, now, I'm told, obviously, that the reason why these taxes are in place is because they are to change people's behaviours and to push people into public transport. But for much of this country, commuters do not have a choice of public transport. Take my own county, in Meath, for example, the largest commuting county in the country. Most commuters do not have a train. The bus service is a disaster. Services are dropped on a daily basis, leaving people at the bus stops late for work. They have no alternative. So your increases in the carbon tax today is not a cha behaviour changing tax, it is a punitive tax and it is impoverishing families. Incredibly as well, uh, this budget is an expansionary, expansionary budget, but it will actually reduce funding going to public services in real terms by 2026 by 2%. This budget will do nothing about getting more guardy, doctors, nurses, teachers and social workers into the system. And this is an incredible to me because for the majority of the year this doll is consumed with the disaster that's happening in public services. We talk about CAMS, we talk about TUSLA, we talk about a health service with about a million people waiting on the lists. And yet on budget day, we seem to forget all of these issues. There's little in this budget about workplace planning, and we hear from IFAC and others that constraints, constraints within the economy are seriously damaging supply of product and causing inflation as well. But the way to mitigate against constraints is to make sure that we have the proper uh, staff in place to deal with it. This budget should have included serious plan in relation to bringing home Irish construction workers who have emigrated in the last 15 years. There should have been a real plan in terms of educating more people for construction work, for guardy, doctors, nurses, teachers, psychiatrists and social uh, workers and to keep them in the country as well. Now this budget is also peppered with one-off lump sums. Now the one-off lump sum does very little to address the underlying causes of poverty in this country. And by God is there poverty in Ireland at the moment. 650,000 people currently living in poverty. 280,000 people currently in arrears for electricity bills. 165,000 people currently in arrears for gas bills. And yet, we ha all you have to do is offer them a, a once-off payments which will have no systemic change in relation to their incomes in the long run. And interestingly, I have to say, this once-off policy platform is now shared with Sinn Féin, who seem like they continue to flirt with Fianna Fáil, uh, their coalition partner in waiting uh, after the next election. Now, many of these tax reductions by the government will do little to help low-income families and middle-income families. And it seems like Fine Gael actually won the debate on the, the USC. So instead of actually reducing the lower rate of USC, the upper rate of USC was reduced. And what does this mean for people? It means that people on 70 grand a year will get a reduction of 235 euros in their tax bill, but a person on 20 grand a year will get a reduction of 10 euros on their tax bill for the whole year. Indeed, if you look at the, the, the pension increase, it's lower than the rate of inflation. So in real terms, it's a net reduction in the income of pensioners. And in a clear sign, of the government's priorities. Nurses working overtime now will pay, will pay more tax on their income than the landlord 
who is earning the same amount of money from passive income because of that house. An incredible situation for a country that's actually hammered for the lack of nurses. And we also have a situation where banks are earning nearly 5 billion euros in profit, but the government decides only to increase the banking levy by just over 100 million euros. There's another theme that's running in this, this budget as well, that the government is promising funding for sectors, but they don't have the staff to fulfill those promises. It's like the government is, is actually delivering a virtual reality budget for many people. The funding for sure exists on paper, but it doesn't exist in reality because it never gets delivered. So the government is looking to decrease the cost of childcare, but at the same time, they're actually decreasing the number of childcare facilities uh, in the country. The government is talking about extending free school bus services, but we're all dealing with kids who still can't get a bus service, and this is well over a month and a half since they got back to school. The government is, is talking about increasing the number of children covered by the GP uh, uh, card, but it's nearly impossible to get onto a GP list at the moment. The government promises more teachers and Gardaí, but in actual fact, teachers and Gardaí can't live in many parts of the, of, of the Greater Dublin area, and, the gar and young people are actually shunning Temple Moor at the moment because Garda welfare and morale is on the floor. You talk, in a similar way, you talk about more funding for businesses. There was much made of the, the, the TBESS funds uh, when that was launched. But out of the 650 million euros that you promised, only 118 million euros was ever drawn then. Because that's because when the government provides funds for businesses, they make it so damn awkward to draw it down that very little of the money actually gets drawn down as well. And we've seen Pascal Donoghue's speech repeat, reuse, recycle previous announcements. The minister announced measures that have already been in place, like the hospital beds, uh, that the department had to delete from their Twitter account. The long announcement uh, of a graduated social welfare plan for people who have been made redundant, again, it did not materialise in this budget and is to happen sometime in the future. That's of no benefit to workers in Tara Mines who lost their jobs months ago and have still nothing to show for it. Another announcement today uh, that were made will actually come after the next budget. The statutory foster care rate increase won't happen until the end of 2024. And incredibly, we have the childcare cost reduction not happening until uh, the end of 2024 as well. Now tell me, Minister, does that say more about the general elections timing or the needs of the people that you pretend to, to want to help? And I want to agree 100% with Cahill Burry's uh, statement as well. This government is, in, is, in der is a d in dereliction of its duty to defend this country, to protect this country uh, against uh, the the large amount of drugs that are coming in uh, as well. The last thing I'll, I'll say in the few seconds that I've left is this government does very little in terms of tackling waste, bureaucracy and red tape. Billions of euros in this budget every year is lost to those issues. Uh, the National Children's Hospital, an example, the 3,500 empty local authority uh, homes uh, are an example. Waste causes inflation, it hurts citizens and it needs to stop. Gerv Mahogat.